एवरीवन माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर सुरेश प्रोफेसर ऑफ बायोकेमिस्ट्री एंड इन दिस वीडियो विल टॉक अबाउट द मेटाबॉलिज्म ऑफ बेसिक कॉमन एसिड्स सच एज लाइसिन एंड आर्जिनिन सो फर्स्ट टू बिगिन विद द लाइसिन सो लाइसिन इज एन एसेंशियल बेसिक कॉमन एसिड इट इज डिफिशिएंट इन सीरियल्स इट डजंट अंडरगो ट्रांसमिनेशन एज लाइक प्रोलीन लाइसिन इज प्रीडोमिनेंटली कीटोजेनिक इन नेचर दैट मींस इट द एंड प्रोडक्ट ऑफ और द फेट ऑफ मेटाबॉलिक फेट ऑफ लाइसिन एंड्स अप इन कीटोजेनिक सब्सटेंसेस In the catabolic pathway, lysin is converted to sacropyne, which finally enters into the pathway of odd number fatty acids. Hyperlysinemia results from congenital deficiency of any of the enzymes of above pathway. Mental retardation and cortical degeneration seen in these conditions. Next, lysin serves the following functions: lysin and hydroxylysin residues of collagen and elastin are important in cross-linking. So, along with the proline, again here lysin. when it get hydroxylated to form hydroxylysin they are the main important residues of collagen and elastin for the cross linkage the epsilon amino group of lysine can form shift bases thus linking to proteins example pyridoxal phosphate with transamination reactions so here lysine which is present in the i mean like enzymes okay which form shift bases which link into proteins like pyridoxal phosphate plp is playing major role in the epsilon amino group of lysin can form shift bases thus linking to protein so best example i can give here plp that helpful in transamination reactions lysin is precursor of carnitine bacterial putrefaction of lysin in intestine gives rise to cadaverin which are all be excreted in the stool so the next basic amino acid of lysin that is arginine so arginine is a semi essential amino acid along with histidine so because histidine and arginine both are semi essential up to certain age a certain age we require them in the diet otherwise they may not require in the diet okay they are highly basic semi essential histidine and arginine lysine all three are uh, highly basic in nature okay and arginine is glucogenic in the urea cycle the arginine splits arginine into urea and ornithine arginine is a necessary for synthesis of creatine yes we have seen in the uh, glycin metabolism the products which are coming from glycin creatine in the making glycin arginine and methionine three amino acids required in making creatine arginine is a precursor of nitric oxide yes this is a important substance which is coming from arginine and we'll study about uh, extensively about nitric oxide in coming slides uh, which is an important molecule a uh, signal molecule in the body which is an important signal molecule in the body so when you see the overview of uh, arginine and ornithine metabolism because uh, when you degrade uh, arginine obviously you will get ornithine okay the last step of urea cycle if you remember arginase which splits arginine into ornithine and urea so here also arginase will come into the action and forms ornithine so from arginine you will get nitric oxide creatine proteins urea and creatine phosphate the storage form of uh, energy in muscles so ornithine to form putrescine and spermidine which are polyamines uh, glutamic uh, semi aldehyde to form proline uh, which incorporated in protein and finally glutamate which enter into gluconeogenic pathway to form glucose so this is the overview of arginine and ornithine metabolism so first we'll talk about nitric oxide what is importance of nitric oxide so it is a toxic pollutant of air Uh, which will be releasing from the automobiles so we call as autom automobile exhaust but now it is shown to possess more potential biological functions than any other known molecule the vasodilatory effect of nitroglycerin is due to release of nitric oxide and endothelium derived relaxing factor is required for arterial dilation okay endothelium derived relaxing factor which is which is required for arterial dilation and edrf is chemically nitric oxide so how nitric oxide is uh, producing we'll see arginine when undergo cleavage okay so it forms citrulline so here molecular oxygen involved to release water molecule and it is nadph dependent reaction so in this picture we'll see how nitric oxide is forming so we are all aware arginine is having guanidine amino group as a functional group okay so from here it will remove one of the amino group and make use it uh, forming nitric oxide with the help of molecular oxygen so here when arginine arginine converted to citrulline and nitric oxide and it is nadph dependent enzyme metabolic fate so once nitric oxide produced it combines with oxygen to form nitric oxide and these nitrites are excreted through urine and on exposure to superoxide anion nitric oxide is converted to highly reactive free radical 
peroxynitrate you can make out here this is dot indicates the uh, free radical which causes lipid peroxidation cell injury and cell death isoenzymes of nitric oxide synthase nitric oxide synthase so here the enzyme nitric oxide synthase arginine converted to citrulline and nitric oxide free radical okay with the help of NADPH so there are three isoforms of nitric oxide synthase these are a product of different genes all forms are seen in almost all tissues neuronal nitric oxide synthase NOS1 otherwise uh, small n NOS or neuronal NOS in seen in central and peripheral neurons nitrogenic neurons are seen especially in cerebellum and uh, gastrointestinal tract so second form is macrophage nitric oxide synthase otherwise known as NOS2 or INOS or inducible nitric oxide synthase or macrophage nitric oxide synthase is mainly seen in macrophages and neutrophils it is induced by cytokines like interleukin 1 and tumor necrosis factor and third variety of nitric oxide synthase is endothelial derived nitric oxide synthase that is NOS3 or ENOS or endothelial NOS which is seen in endothelial cells platelets endocardium and myocardium in these sites the nitric oxide is constantly produced and released so as to have arterial relaxation mechanism of action of nitric oxide so how this produced nitric oxide will be acting so nitric oxide it immediately diffuses to adjacent smooth muscle and activates gonadotropic cyclase that means it increases levels of cyclic gmp so in turn activating protein kinase in smooth muscles and this kinase in smooth muscles leads to relaxation leading the relaxation of muscles so thus nitric oxide overall effect is it is acting as a vasodilator so it is a potent vasodilator physiological actions of nitric oxide so on blood vessels as we discussed earlier it is a potent vasodilator the normal blood pressure is maintained by nitric oxide liberated by endothelial nitric oxide synthase and no causes cerebral coronary renal and muscle arteries to dilate a deficiency of nitric oxide is associated with hypotension excessive production of nitric oxide results in refractory hypotension which you can see in patients with septemic shock central nervous system and the effect of nitric oxide in central nervous system is like uh, um, it stimulates uh, releasing hormones like uh, uh, releasing hormone i mean a growth hormone releasing hormone uh, luteinizing hormone releasing hormone like this several hormones will be released because of the effect of nitric oxide macrophages contains isoforms of nosi it stands for inducible the enzyme produces nitric oxide and peroxynitrate which are lethal microorganisms so lethal to microorganisms that means they have defense mechanism against the microorganisms nitric oxide production macrophages introduced by uh, sorry induced by interleukins and tumor necrosis factors platelets inhibits addition of uh, I mean, nitric in platelets nitric oxide inhibits the addition of platelets and so depress the platelet functions in intestinal system nitric oxide is a non adrenergic and non cholinergic neurotransmitter especially in gastrointestinal tract jit i mean urogenital tract it relaxes smooth muscles and leads to reduced git motility and relaxation of sphincters so now nitric oxide in decision treatment so in treatment of angina pectoris so if there is any blockage in the heart so to treat that this nitric oxide injection will be useful so nitroprusside can directly release nitric oxide nitroglycerin requires glutathione to produce nitric oxide these will dilate coronary arteries and are beneficial in treating angina pectoris and pulmonary hypertension inhalation of nitric oxide useful in treatment of pulmonary hypertension and high altitude pulmonary edema nitric oxide produces pulmonary vasodilation without lowering systemic blood pressure impotence so nitric oxide as we all uh, aware it is a important uh, vasodilator so it increases the blood circulation to smooth uh, i mean like a soft part of penis okay it relaxes smooth muscles in the corpus cavernosum and increases blood flow into the penis and makes it erect and that's what the viagra i mean sildenafil citrate the chemical name of viagra is selectively inhibit the specific phosphodiesterase type 5 thus inhibiting the hydrolysis of cgmp and keep on producing uh, i mean keeping the active state of cgmp and increasing the concentration of cgmp in corpus cavernosum so there is a continuous blood flow and uh, the uh, keep on erecting the penis so here you see here nitric oxide uh, relaxes smooth muscles it prevents platelet aggregation platelets in central nervous system functions as neurotransmitter in brain and uh, in play, i mean uh, white blood cells mediate bacterial actions of macrophages so these are all the functions are there of nitric oxide so now coming to polyamines polyamines are putrescine spermidin spermin so which are very very important for uh, body functioning 
So they are all synthesized from arnithin. So arnithin is coming from arginine. So with the help of methionine, polyamines will be synthesized. Arnithin, methionine in combination to make polyamines. So difluoromethyl arnithin is a powerful inhibitor of polyamine synthesis. It is an example of suicide inhibition. African sleeping sickness and Indian kala azar are produced by parasites and trypsinomas. In these parasites, the half-life of arnithin decarboxylase is in many hours. DFMO, I mean like inhibiting polyamine synthesis, uh, so parasite cannot divide and the immune system of the host can kill them. So this DFMO is a potent uh, drug which can be used in treatment of African sleeping sickness and in Indian kala azar. The half-life of arnithin decarboxylase in, main, in man is only 5 minutes. So enzyme molecules are constantly synthesized and hence the drug will not affect human beings. So DFMO is also useful against pneumocytosis, carini, parasite infection which is common in AIDS. So the biochemical functions of polyamines, if you see polyamines are required for protein biosynthesis and uh, have several roles in suggesting for uh, polyamines, example cell proliferation, synthesis of DNA and RNA etc. Polyamine concentration is increased in cancer tissues. Polyamines are growth factors in cell culture systems. And coming to biogenic amines, they are generally synthesized by decarboxylation of amino acids. They are also basic in nature. They have diverse biological functions. So one is uh, polyamine synthesis. If you see, methionine converted to SAM and SAM is converted into decarboxy SAM. Decarboxy SAM is converted into amino propane and methyl thioadenosine. Okay. So it's SAM, D-SAM and then uh, methyl thioadenosine and aminopropane. So now arnithin and come in contact and form putrescine, putrescine to spermidine, spermidine to spermin. So like this, starting with the methionine by joining the arnithin, both involved in making putrescine, spermidine, and spermin. So when you talk about biogenic amines, when you talk about biogenic amines, you see here serine when undergo decarboxylation to form ethanolamine in choline making, choline production. Tyrosine to form thyramine, dopa, dopamine, important uh, uh, catecholamine, uh, tryptophan to tryptamine, hydroxytryptophan to serotonin, happy hormone, histidine to undergo histamine as anti allergic, sub I mean, allergic substance which will be produced uh, in uh, allergic reactions. It's a vasodilator again, ornithine to putrescine, lysine to cadaverin, and cysteine to taurine. All these are biological amines because of, I mean, biological amines which produced because of decarboxylation. So that's all about basic amino acid metabolism, uh, lysine, arginine, and polyamines and biogenic amines. Thanks for watching. Thank you.